Supply chain literature classically focuses on ordering policies where each separate item is treated in complete isolation to all the other items. The decision to order more units of item A is strictly independent from the decision to order more units of item B. However, this approach has some significant limitations. In contrast, the prioritized ordering policies emphasize multi-item decisions, where each item competes for capital allocation with all the other items. In practice, prioritized ordering provides much more fine-grained control over inventory performance. And when the proper predictive technologies are available, prioritized ordering allows for superior inventory performance. We strongly recommend adopting a prioritized ordering policy whenever possible. A typical inventory policy seeks answers to the following questions. When should the replenishment order be placed and how large should the replenishment order be? However, before quantitatively addressing these issues, we need to decide on the form of the inventory control policy. Now, there are numerous possible control systems. For example, you may have a fixed quantity being ordered whenever the inventory positions drop to the reorder point or lower. Similarly, you can have the reorder point triggered when the inventory hits the reorder point, but instead of a fixed quantity, you order up to a defined inventory level. But not all control systems wait for the reorder point to be reached to place a new order. Some order at specific intervals of time up to a given inventory level, typically used when the ordering is a daily manual process with scheduled validations from the purchasing manager. Supply chain literature drastically frames the whole ordering process under simple assumptions, which fails to properly account for the actual economic drivers. Namely, the classic supply chain approach looks at all the items on order in isolation. However, one of the key supply chain insights gathered over the hundreds of companies serviced by Lilkhead is that considering items in isolation makes very little sense in practice. For instance, new items enter the market all the time at the same time as older items exit the market all the time. Items are likely to have substitutes of varying quality, and items that are often sold in a bundle require a combination of items in stock. Inventory is optimized only when the capital allocation for inventory maximizes the market potential of the company while taking all of the inventory risks into account. Within this capital allocation, all items are in constant competition with each other for every marginal investment. This is very important. Each item should be assessed against its expected return of investment and its expected cost for the next additional unit to be ordered. This is what the prioritized ordering policy is all about. In practice, the prioritized purchase list is organized in a way where the highest line, which contains the order quantity for a specific item, has the highest return on investment. Then the next line would be the next highest, then the next, and so on. In other words, as we go down the prioritized list, the return on investment is decreasing. The priority list has technically no end, but will in practice be truncated either by the capital available for investment or where the return on investment is indeed higher than a given threshold. At LOCAT, we have observed that when a probabilistic forecasting technology is available, that is a forecasting technology capable of forecasting the respective probabilities for the entire future demand level and not merely just forecasting the future mean or median demand level. Then, approaches that rely on the purchase priority list systematically demonstrate superior inventory performance.